So good morning, Westminster. I hope you're well today. I'm uh, sort of full confession. I, I have to. I have to tell you, I'm a little angry this week. I, I am um, not quite sure. I'll get into the details of my anger, but it's certainly not with anybody here. It's not with. It's not with. It's not with God. It is more with the children of God that I have some anger and some disappointment in, and I'll be, I'll be dealing with that a little bit today, and I, and I hope you'll share my indignation and my anger, and I hope you'll also share with me my idea that we need to do something about it. But all is not darkness. There is incredible amount of good in this world, and if we don't look at it, if we don't appreciate it, if we don't feed it, sometimes, you know, that good can fade a little bit. This week I was uh, privileged to run into a young lady who I have known for, oh, 25 years. She's, she's, uh, I saw her growing up as a child, and I hadn't seen her for a while, and it was really great to reconnect with her. Uh, she's a child of Mars and went to Mars High School. She sort of fell in between the ages of my two daughters, and it was just a pleasure to see her. She's a nurse, and she's an ICU nurse. And she told the story of uh, how she served in the ICUs during the uh, COVID situation, and how she uh, and a couple of the other younger nurses would say, um, the more experienced ICU nurses, they called them the elders. And Jeannie smiles. So they worked hard to make sure that the, the older, more experienced nurses whom they perceived as being more at risk for COVID were kept back away from the most serious of, of, the, of the patients. And she worked uh, at UPMC for a year or better during the height of the disaster and saw so many people come and suffer and saw so many people that she just couldn't help. And she was uh, an amazing uh, pillar of strength for me as I watched her and talked to her. And at the end of a year, she decided that she was getting to the point where she knew too many of the people. She knew this was just getting to her too much. So she decided, because there was a need to become one of those traveling nurses that would, you know, go from disaster to disaster, COVID problem to COVID problem. So she went to uh, Florida, where apparently it was pretty bad for a while, and she worked in Florida for a year. And I could tell that as she talked about it, there were faces coming and going in her, 
in her memory of, of the people that she had uh, worked with and struggled to save. And she was quiet for a moment, and I said, you know, Leanne, I said, there's only so many times you could say goodbye before it starts to get to you. And you could tell, you could tell that that entire situation, that entire few years of COVID had left her uh, probably permanently scarred. Talk about PTSD. And I was amazed at her resilience, though, saying that she's going to stick with the idea of, of being a nurse, that she was going to stick with the idea of healing people, because that's what she felt called to do, and she used those words. Nursing oftentimes, medical profession oftentimes, is more of a calling than it is a profession. And in the, and in the times when COVID was absolutely at its raging height, those people put themselves in danger to help and to serve. They put us before them. What a great, what a great example of, of goodness. What a great example of Christ's blessing upon a person to know that they are called to serve others. So I was, I was lifted up by her, and I felt this was very nice. And I have sort of lifted my spirits somewhat. And I also, I will, I will also point out that the, in addition to the people that are there for you medically, there are also a lot of people that are there for you in times of trouble, economic trouble, physical trouble, just things in your life that go sideways and all of a sudden you realize you have very few options. Perhaps, perhaps you're facing eviction. Perhaps you have a roof that's leaking and you can't find anywhere, any money to fix it. Perhaps you now need a wheelchair but you can't get into your house because there's no ramp. Perhaps something as simple as the refrigerator gave out. And how are you supposed to keep food on the plate? Perhaps some significant past and now you're left alone and things are not good. Where do you go? Who do you talk to? Who do you reach out to? There are organizations, there are people out there. Locally, we have a fabulous organization that's called Hosanna Industries that answers the call. They will hear your problem. They will help you through it. They are the people that have built a number of quick houses. Boom, over a weekend, your house is from nothing to being livable. I've been part of that. They will go, they will put a new roof on. They have spent many, many a time working in Florida during the hurricane, working in New Orleans for that. They're a local company that seeks to, well, they're a local charity that seeks to bring good to the community through helping people one at a time. So I'm, I'm very privileged. One of the great honors of my life personally is, was to be asked to be part of Hosanna Industries Board of Directors. And I am uh, humbled by it. I, I feel there's, no, no, there's never enough that I could do for them. So I always feel lacking. But I always try to feature them. And one of the ways I feature them is to ask them to come at a certain point during the year and give us a little synopsis of who they are and what they do. So I'm very, very uh, honored today to ask Katie, who is a member of, of, the, of the Hosanna team, to, uh, to come and, and give us some information about Hosanna Industries. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, that's a great speaker. Uh, <laughs> my name's Katie, and uh, like Tom said, I'm on the staff at Hosanna. I've been on the staff for about 10 years of serving uh, the mission through our day-to-day uh, -day operations. Um, to give you a little synopsis of Hosanna, we were founded on 1990 at the First Presbyterian Church of Bakerstown on Route 8. And the vision that brought about Hosanna uh, was the associate pastor at the time, Reverend Don Ed. 
It was tradition for that church to visit some of their local family congregation members um, at the holidays for any family or holiday meals or Christmas gifts. And when they uh, delivered some gifts to one of their uh, congregation members and arrived at their home, their home was in very unlivable conditions. Uh, roof was falling apart, uh, just very unsafe environment for them, and so that gave him the urgency that we need to do something and help this family. So that's the vision that brought about Hosanna, is we help uh, families in our local community in the Beaver, Butler, and Allegheny County day-to-day -day with various home repairs. We help about 140 to 150 families a year in the area with all kinds of repairs. So we do a lot of roofs, siding, we do a lot of wheelchair ramps, uh, hot water tanks, uh, tub to shower conversions, flooring, painting, drywall, you name it, we do it all. Uh, do a lot of furnaces, we sub out furnaces to uh, specialty companies that do that. Um, last year, to give you an idea of uh, just some statistics that we did last year, we helped 143 families with a market value of $2 million. So we are uh, charitable and very frugal in the way that we turn $5 of donated uh, money, or one dollar, I'm sorry, turn one dollar into five dollars worth of market value. We do that through uh, volunteer participation, we do that through uh, donated materials through local uh, building companies, um, and that's how we're able to really stretch the dollar, um, and that's what we're mainly known for, is stretching the dollar and doing as much work as we can um, and helping families. So that's what we typically do day to day. Um, we have volunteers all year round. You can be any skill level, any age. We don't limit anybody because our motto is God's work is everyone's business. So we like to make our work and what we feel like we're called to do to be the Lord's servants and we want to share that with the rest of the community and get everybody involved. Um, typically what I do is I speak at churches. Um, that's how I get church recruitment or recruitment of volunteers. So I speak at churches usually every Sunday. I'm pretty booked up until uh, the end of the year. Um, but I speak at churches to get volunteer recruitment, to get the word out there about who we are and what we do. And you guys can participate in a number of ways. You can come out and serve on a project. Um, you can talk with one of our uh, people on staff and they actually coordinate all the volunteers. We have various fundraisers throughout the year, so that's another way we keep income coming in is through various community fundraisers. So we have a golf benefit, we have a trap shoot, we just had a trap shoot, but we have a trap shoot, we have an enchanted tea for mothers and ladies for Mother's Day weekend. Uh, we have a chili and pie cook off in the fall if any of you people like to cook. Um, you can cook and it's a contest. So we taste all the different pies and chilies and uh, it's a contest. We have a, a Festival of Trees event for those of you that like to decorate trees um, and get in the Christmas spirit. We have all those items that are decorated, trees that are decorated with different themes and holiday decor. We do a bid and that's another way we can uh, get funds. And another way, um, one of the biggest ways that I've really been promoting for new people that want to get involved. If you don't want to swing a hammer, or if you feel like you can't, that's okay. Um, another way you can participate is through gift delivery. So at Christmas time, we pick uh, a number of families that we have helped throughout the year. Last year we were able to do 75 families. Um, we pick, hand select the families, we give the families to different churches in the area that um, want to supply the gifts for the families. So usually uh, in the past how we've done it is the First Presbyterian Church of Bakerstown women. We usually give all the families to them. They supply all the gifts. Um, but I found out last year that churches wanted to be more involved, so this was one of the other ways they could be involved. Uh, we actually gave them also family, so we kind of divided it among different churches that wanted to supply gifts. Um, and then what you do is we um, actually hand select um, people in the community and we assign them to a family. So they come to our Gibsonia campus, they pick up all of the gifts, we uh, supply pounds of ground beef, we provide a frozen turkey, and then canned food that we make, and uh, we give all those gifts to the members that want to 
give to the family, and then they actually go and deliver the gifts personally to the family. So that's a really good firsthand experience of, of the clients we help. You get to experience them and get to know them. A lot of the families we help are disabled, can't get in and out of their home, have nobody, have no family, and just are very alone, um, and just want company and want uh, community involvement with that. So that's really uh, one of the best ways, I think, if you don't want to, sw- like I said, if you don't want to swing a hammer, that's one of the best ways is through gift delivery um, and just really getting to know the people that we help and the people in your community um, that you otherwise wouldn't really get in touch with. Um, we also have, uh, for those of you that like to cook and be in the kitchen, we uh, started this about five years ago. We have a Rochester campus where our main headquarters are. It's about 20 minutes from here near the New Swickley Township building um, where we do all of our construction. We have 15 buildings on the property that accommodate various um, aspects to our mission. Um, and I'd be happy to give you guys a tour anytime anybody wants one to show you the property. Um, but on that property, we have a one acre garden, and this we started in 2014, where we get all donated plants from various greenhouses, one of them being Tom's, and uh, they supply all the plants and all the seeds, and we uh, plant everything. And then by the end of the season, we produce about a thousand jars of food. We can everything through water bath canning. We make different jams, relishes, all kinds of stuff. And uh, we turn around at Christmas time. Half of it goes to supporters of the mission as a thank you gift. And then the other half, uh, through COVID, we started this other half um, of the program as we give it to families that need food. Um, and we're actually hoping this year to produce even more than a thousand jars because as COVID is really starting to affect families, we have found that more people need food. So we're really hoping to make that program flourish. So if you want to be involved with uh, stuffing jars, cutting food, learning how to can, um, that's another way you can get involved in that program is actually starting up this summer. So it goes through um, usually about July when produce starts to produce through about September. So that's another way you can get involved. And that's in all takes place at our Rochester campus, so you don't have to go very far. Um, Our other campus is Gibsonia. We acquired this campus about six summers ago, and we acquired it from two previous sculptors that lived on the property, very artistic, very creative, and uh, when they passed away, uh, their nephew came to us and said, we want you to have the property. So we purchased the property for a small fee. And on the property is various sculpting pieces that the ladies had left behind. Eliza and Janet Deku were their names. And they, uh, so in taking on that property, we really wanted to carry on their legacy and teach art. So we teach various art classes there. Uh, we teach watercolor, we teach copper enameling, we teach stained glass, we teach knife making, we teach all kinds of things um, to carry on what they left behind. They left behind their old kiln, uh, they left behind all of their materials, all of their tools, and so we're like, we want to use this and reach out to the community in this way. So. This campus mainly focuses on spiritual and richness development. So uh, we have Bible studies, all kinds of things there. So there's two campuses you can get involved in that provide different aspects of our mission um, and ways you can get involved. Very briefly, I'm going to give you um, a new initiative that we just started this year um, in Johnstown. Are you any of you familiar with the Johnstown area on the other side of Pennsylvania? Um, used to be the the state's richest city. Now it's the poorest because of the steel mill closing down. And Reverend Don Ed used to be, uh, he's actually a native of Johnstown, grew up in Johnstown. Um, It's been very near and dear to our hearts. We've visited Johnstown many times over the years uh, as his family resides there. Um, But the 1889 Foundation and the Johnstown Redevelopment Authority of Johnstown came to us last fall and uh, knew about us, knew what we did, and we're really crying out Hosanna. They needed help. They needed what we do here and needed in Johnstown. So they came to us and said, we want you to do what you do here and train us so we can do what you do here and do it there. So for the next five years, we are committed to Johnstown. We will still do local repairs, but we're also going to be in Johnstown at the same time, about four or five days out of each month throughout the year. 
For the next five years, the first year we're going to be helping about 25 families in the area. We received a grant from the 1889 Foundation, which we will have to reapply every year. Um, but for this year alone, we got a grant, helped 25 families, and in the meantime, we want to find a construction supervisor, a volunteer coordinator, a church relations program director like I am, uh, business relations, and mission workers in general that are local to Johnstown, we're going to train them to do what we do and compress it in five years. And then after the five years, we're hoping that they're going to run with the ball there, and then we can come back here. So each year, the families will grow, the list of families will grow, the needs will grow. Um, and so we're going to be very, very involved with that. So just a couple ways you can get involved, as I get asked all the time, well, how can I get involved? First of all, you can pray for us. We believe that we are doing the Lord's work. We believe that the Lord leads us each and every day. We start, in day, start our day and end our day with prayer. We want him to be the focus of our mission, um, and we believe that he is. So just pray for us that we are continuing to follow his leading, continuing to follow his guidance, um, and just pray that we're going to be able to accomplish all that he's put in front of us. Uh, the second way is volunteering. You can volunteer through a fundraising um, effort. You can volunteer through volunteering on a construction site. You can participate in our canning program. You can teach a class at Gibsonia if you have a skill that you want to teach. Um, we, have, we have teachers available um, to teach and uh, you can participate in a class. There are a number of ways you can get involved. Third way is financially. Um, of course, we can't do what we do without the finances to continue our mission, to run the utilities, to run our, with fuel costs going higher, we have to run our vehicles. Um, and bringing up the financial aspect, uh, one of the biggest questions I've received over the past two years is how's COVID affected your mission? And everybody's very interested in that. Um, we've shut down for the whole month of April in 2020. Um, and we kept, they actually, during that whole time, the calls doubled. Um, so when our first, uh, our first week back, we started back in May, our first week back we did uh, seven to eight hot water tanks. And because the calls kept coming in, we said, we need to get out there and help them. We'll be as safe as we can, uh, be as safe as possible, but these people need help. So we decided to start up back in May. We've been very cautious throughout that. We didn't have any volunteers in 2020. 2021 volunteer um, participation started to grow, and now this year we're starting to seem like we're back to normal, <laughs> So, which is really great for us to experience and great for us to see. So that's been one of the biggest ways is volunteers didn't really um, happen as much. Then the other way is building materials. I don't know if any of you are in touch with what uh, building materials cost. They have doubled and some have tripled in price. Uh, a two by four used to be $3, now it's $7. A uh, bundle of shingles used to be $30, now it's $50. Um, a, uh, aluminum gutter has, aluminum has gone up. Um, everything is just expedited. So that has actually made our projects double in cost. Um, so we've had to really be intense with fundraising um, unexpectedly in that regard. Um, also products are delayed. Products aren't being made as quick as they have been. So that's been another way we've been affected also with just the building materials to get our work done. Um, so third way is financially. You can give through as a church. You can give individually if you feel led. We, uh, you can give through a business. If you own a business, you can give through business. Um, but that's the three ways we raise our funds is through churches, individuals, and businesses. So if you feel led, if you feel the, support, the spirit leading you, um, you can give financially. That's also accepted also. Um, I'll be after the service if you have any other questions. I have brochures I brought with me if you want to take one home with you just to kind of read through it um, and get to know us. Um, but Facebook and Instagram are also two other ways you can keep in touch with us. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you for letting me come and speak and share with you um, our ministry, and hopefully we get you guys involved. I feel better. I'm not as angry. Thank you. And the joy of today is uh, today, really. Today is the day that the Lord hath made. Come together, let us rejoice and be glad in it.
<clears throat> Excuse me. Please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> Arise, people of God, to greet the one who calls us. Come alive to the Spirit's energy among us. God awakens us and restores our souls. Surely God's goodness and mercy are with us here. The shepherd is calling us to new ventures. We are invited to a higher quality of life. We will, we will not fear to walk through shadowed shadow valleys. God's love in Christ is with us everywhere. Come to drink from the springs of living water. Gather to find comfort and blessing here. Surely good will guide our search for truth. We seek eternal values within our daily walks. to our river, please open your heart to us, open our minds and our hearts to you. Lord, let us come humbly before you today as we enter this holy place of worship. In your name we pray, amen. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Child. 
How often is it winter in our lives? The good we do seems frozen within us, and our faith is cold and sluggish. A voice calls us to believe and to care, to confess our doubts, and awaken the potential within us. Please join me in the prayer of confession. O oh God, we look at events around us and cannot perceive you within them. We shed tears and find no comfort. We listen for your voice and are greeted by silence. The world seems full of enemies waiting to devour us. On every hand, there are problems too complex to solve. We live in fear rather than faith. We cry out to you for answers. O oh God, do you hear us? Amen. The answer to that question is, of course, yes, he does hear us. If he didn't hear us, he wouldn't have sent his son. If he didn't hear our cries for help, he would not have answered them by having his son come, walk with us, talk with us, teach us, and provide an example of what is pure and good. If he did not hear us, he wouldn't have raised his son from the dead. If he did not hear us, he would not have washed our sins away. I can proclaim to you today that it is through the faith that you have in Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior that your sins, your sins are forgiven. Now, understand that he adopts you too. And as he has forgiven and adopted, he also sends you forth. That's today's message. We're sent. Enjoy that the sins are washed clean. Amen. Join me in this responsive reading. It is found in the red hymnal number 29 or on the wall. I lift my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and the earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city which is bound firmly together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. As was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Their thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Amen.
heart, I'm running for your heart, till I am a soul on fire, Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day, when I am a soul on fire, till I am a soul on fire. not this was not the sermon I intended to give earlier in the week but as I reflected on on things I, I realized that I I was being called to uh, to speak to something which I uh, have avoided twice before and decided at this point I I can't I can't uh, can't walk away from it uh, at one point last week when we were offering prayers, there was a request for the prayers of the family of the people in, in Buffalo, and I realized how important that was. And then I started thinking about it as the week went along, and I thought, okay, in, in 2015 in Charlotte, where nine people were shot dead in an African-American church, by a, a young white man who came to the door and was invited in to worship with them and he ended up shooting up the place and, and killing nine people. I said nothing at that, at that point to the congregation that I was serving. In 2018, November 28th, um, the Sunday that followed that, horrific event that took place at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Squirrel Hill. 
less than a half a mile away from where I lived when I went to school at CMU, there was a shooting that resulted in 11 people dying, six people being wounded. And now, and I, at that point, I, I said, well, shalom, peace, we prayed. But I didn't challenge anybody to do anything. I just felt the weight of the awful event, and I, I didn't, didn't respond in any way. So this past, a week ago Saturday, where a gunman killed 10 people in a Buffalo supermarket, again, we prayed last week, but I didn't, I didn't challenge anybody to do anything. And I, I felt, as the week went on, I, I thought to myself, what, what good can I offer? What, what, what words can I say that might inspire or encourage or condemn or, or put into perspective some of the events that, that have taken place over the past it goes back for many years, it goes beyond the 2015 shooting. There's been other events. So I was struggling with that, and I uh, thought, okay, maybe, maybe I'm not being called to, to preach to that. Maybe I'm just being um, called to be indignant about it. And then I read the scripture that... Uh, um, it was sort of in the lectionary. I'm not sure that it was this week or some other weeks, but it was one of the lectionary readings, and I, I started to read it, and I was kind of uh, struck by it. And I, I, think it's, I think it's an important, um, I think it's, it's critically important that we hear Jesus' words to Peter and take them as Jesus' words to us. So I'm going to read a little bit of it, and then I'll probably reference a few more places. But this comes from, from uh, chapter 10. And so Peter is, um, he's, he's been already commissioned by, by Jesus beside the water where they had the fish for breakfast. He's, Paul has already been um, brought into the fold. Uh, Stephen has already been martyred. Uh, there's a lot of things that have already happened. And, and so Peter is, is dealing with all of this and he's trying to come to terms with how can he reach the people? What, what should he be doing? I'm sure there was a lot going on in his mind. And I am sure that he was also focused on the fact that he was a devout Jew that he was focused on the fact that the law was the law and he was trying to live according to the law, but he was also trying to be part of this new joy that he had received, which was the life that Christ had given him. So he was trying his best to, to probably put all of that in perspective. And, and this comes as he's, as he's journeying. And I'll read it starting with, Verse 17 in chapter 10. No, verse 9 in chapter 10. So, he was in Joppa. And about noon on the day, as they were journeying and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heavens open and something like a large sheet coming down, being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. But Peter said, Oh, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again a second time, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. So the scripture goes on to talk about how Peter was confused by this. 
And he saw this sheet come down and he was, he was offered the opportunity to, to eat these things that weren't necessarily part of his normal diet. In fact, they were probably off the list. And he was confused, what did this mean? That God was offering him this and, and, the, uh, and, my, and my Bible at home is a red letter edition and those words, take and eat, they're in red, which would probably indicate, at least in somebody's point of view, that that was Jesus talking to Peter, saying to him, go ahead. So Peter was a little confused by all of that, and as he was trying to sort it out in his own mind, there was a knock on the door. And the knock on the door came from a number of people who had been sent by Cornelius, who is the other person in this story. And Cornelius was a Roman soldier. He had a lot of people under him. But the scripture says that he was a devout man. He believed in God. He gave alms. He understood that there was a God and he worshiped that God. But he wasn't a Jew. So he was off limits. So when this knock came on the door, there were these Gentiles standing outside of Peter's door asking to talk to Peter. Well, goodness gracious, you don't let those kind of people into your house, do you? I mean, them as them as them. We don't, we don't deal with them. But Peter came down and he talked to them and he began to understand perhaps something about that vision that he had. So he invited them into the house. Oh, and they stayed the night in his house. Oh my goodness, breaking every rule there was. The next day, he goes with them. And he goes to visit Cornelius in his house. Again, Peter, the devout Jew, going to see this Gentile. And Peter, of course, when this first sheet came down and God said to him and Jesus said to him, go ahead and eat, Peter's response was not, well, thanks, I appreciate that. You know, you got any ketchup? No, his response was, I, I'm not going to touch that, Lord. I don't care what you say, I'm not going to do that. Peter kind of rejected the Lord right out of hand. But if you think about Cornelius in the story, Cornelius also had a vision and that vision was to send someone to get Peter because Peter had something important to say to him. And Cornelius didn't argue, didn't cast dispersions. He said, yep, we're going to do it right away. There was not a question. So he sent for him. So Peter gets there and he gets into the house and first thing he says to Cornelius is, well, you know, I'm not supposed to be here. It's against the rules for me to be here. And Cornelius, of course, is overwhelmed by the fact that Peter came and fell at, fell at Peter's feet to worship him. And Peter quickly lifted him up and said, no, no, I'm just a man. Let's, don't get carried away here. Why did you want me to come? Peter says. And Cornelius says, I had a vision. Peter probably said, yeah, I had a vision too. Now wait a minute, how do these two visions work? Am I to come to you to spread the gospel even though you're not a Jew? Is that what that meant when all of those creatures were available for me to eat? When all of those creatures were there that I could, oh, it must mean something. It must mean something. So Peter took the bull by the horns and he started to proclaim the gospel good news to Cornelius, to Cornelius' family, and to a lot of friends that Cornelius had brought in to hear this story of, of peace, of joy, of freedom from sin. Cornelius, as the story goes, along with all of the people were there, 
as they were being preached to by Peter, suddenly the Holy Spirit descended upon those people. Can you believe that? That the Holy Spirit was not reserved just for the Orthodox Jews of the time. It was there for all people. All of them. Jews and Gentiles. I don't care. I don't care if you live in a McMansion behind a gate. I don't care if you live in a project with three locks in the door that have been broken twice. I don't care if you have three degrees in many different subjects. I don't care if you ever got past the sixth grade. I don't care if you have abundance. I don't care if you have lacking. You are my brother. You are my sister. And the Holy Spirit is there for you. The grace of God is there for you. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're yellow. I don't care about any of that. When I look at you, I see Christ in you. And you are my brother. Peter came to realize that that was the case. In verse 34, it says, Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. Brothers and sisters, the events of this past week highlight evil. It highlights somehow somebody decided that there was a white supremacy thing called replacement. That we as white people were about to be replaced by either Jews or blacks. That thinking is an affront to God. That thinking is a sin in his eyes. That thinking must not be allowed to stand. That thinking must be washed from our world. Brothers and sisters, of every color, of every race, of every gender, of every economic point of view and standing. We are all together with Christ. His, he is available to each of us, and each of those lives is precious in his sight, or else he wouldn't have made them. So how can we stand by and watch as people kill other people? This is not, not, capital N-O-T, big letters, not some diatribe on gun control. I have shotguns, I have rifles, I have pistols, I have all of that. Is there some room in this world for more discussion along those lines? Okay, I'll, I'll get you there. That's fine. We can talk about it. But in this case, this is not about gun control. This is about hate. This is about evil. And this is about what we must be working on. God's work is everybody's business. It's our business to bring good into this world. We cannot stand by. We cannot let this kind of thing happen without we as a community of faith saying, have you heard about Jesus? Have you heard about the love that he brings into this world? Have you heard about how important it is that each one of us experience that? And having experienced that, can you then understand how that person next to you is your brother? How that person down the street who looks like they haven't had a shower because we don't know why, that's your brother. That's your sister. When you look at them, you're looking at Jesus. We need to reach out to them. We need to be part of that community. We need to, we need to stamp out the people. That's not the right word. 
We need to love the people who bring that kind of hate into this world. The man in Pittsburgh who shot up the synagogue, born and raised in Pittsburgh. The young man, I will not speak their names, the young man who went to the uh, grocery store, neither one of them were born racists. Neither one of them came into this world with hate in their, war, in their lives. Neither one of them experienced hate to begin with. They were both born with the seed of faith placed within them. That seed of faith was somehow taken away and replaced with a seed of, I don't know how to describe it, some sort of evil that led them in a direction that was so abhorrent. I have chosen to speak on this subject today because we need to do something. I know there'll be raging conversations over gun control and this got to do away with that, got to do away with the third thing. I'll tell you what, folks. Would those people have been any less dead or would the situation have been any less awful had that young man thrown Molotov cocktails which he could have made out of a Coke bottle? Would that situation have been any better or worse if he'd have taken a knife and gone after people? Would that situation have been any better or worse had he taken his hunting pump shotgun, pulled the plug out, put the extra rounds in and gone after? It could have been worse. So as we think about what the solution is, we need to think about what God has done for us in saying to us that everybody, everybody is available for the love. Everybody is available to have their, to have themselves cleansed and to reach out and be a part of a community that brings goodness into this world. I pray that we as a church will, will reach out somehow, some way to bring sanity where there isn't any, to bring peace where there seems to be evil, to bring understanding. If it were easy, I'm sure it would have been done by now. But I think we must take that step. We as a community of faith must say, Christ is here for you and know him. Know Christ and you will know peace. Know him, and you will know your brother. Know him, and you will receive Christ's grace and life eternal. Amen. Amen. Having heard the word of God, having thought about it, I would ask you if you were willing to stand and to affirm your faith by the use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was dead, born and dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the subject of heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. So we as a community of faith, we will join together in prayer. Are there things on your heart that you would like us to lift up as a community of faith? Anything that we know of? Yes. I have one more praise song that I'd like to add in for today. Okay. If everybody can help me, Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious 
in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. in our lives and, and somebody says what's new and we can shake our head and say nothing, that's a good thing. So the fact that nothing really particular is being lifted up I think can be considered as a good thing. But we do have joys. There are joys in this world that we will, we will celebrate and there are concerns. There, how's your brother? Is, there, is he getting better? Yeah? That surgery went all right? And, yeah? And, okay. That's good. And you? How, how are things there? Okay. Uh, way better than I expected. So. Dancing tomorrow, right? Yeah, well, probably not dancing tomorrow, but uh, and then uh, Melissa's going well as well. Okay, that's great news. Good to hear. All right, let's pray. Father, we come before you a humble people, a people that, as our confession sometimes says, we don't know if you're hearing us, but we know you do. We know that even in the darkest of times, you are always there. So as we, we, as we reflect on the events of the past week, the past few years, and we, we think about how there is evil in this world, we still know that you are good. And we still know that you have given each of us the grace, the peace, and the love. We know that it is through the faith that we proclaim in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior that we are lifted from the grave, that we are lifted from sin, that we are lifted to be a part of your, your cohort in heaven. So we praise you and we thank you, both for this beautiful spring day and for the many blessings that you have placed upon each of our lives. We lift up to you, we lift up to you, those who are not here, who worship <clears throat> perhaps at home with us, those who are traveling, <clears throat> it is a season of, of vacations getting started. So as we, as we look to the, the joy of the relaxation and the, and the pleasures of the, of the summer, may each of us go forth knowing that you go with us. And may we continue to carry you in our heart no matter where we go. Father, we know there are those moments in our lives when we, <clears throat> when we forget about you, when we ignore the gifts, when we seek to put ourselves front and center, when we find that physical and economics and all of those little trifly things become too important to us. We forget your love. We waste your gifts. We wander from your ways, but you are still there for us. You still bring us home, and when we do come home, you are there smiling and loving and reaching out and welcoming. You say to us, I love you, and we say thank you. So Father, please accept our praise, please accept our our admiration, our, our joy, all of the things that we bring before you, we lay at your feet and we thank you for each and everything. And Father, we also bring before you to lay at your feet many petitions, many things that we carry within ourselves. Some of those things occasionally will separate us from you. Lift those burdens from us. Hear our quiet, silent prayers. Hear our Hear our hosannas, our cries for help. Hear us always. We know you do, and we, we, we see the results are all around us. Father, we're grateful for the healing that is taking place. We're grateful for people who are facing Facing a new beginning, we also, Father, bring to you the deep fears that we carry. Fears that the anger and the hatred in this world are becoming more and more powerful. Fear that wars that are spread across the world are, are becoming more commonplace and more bloodly and more deadly and more out of control. 
Father, we come to you in fear, but we know that it is you who can quell that, that you can quiet our fears, that you can bring peace to the world. We know, Father, that all things are in your hands. We lift up to you, Father, the, the families in Buffalo who are still reeling from the loss. They are approaching the time of burial and probably are revisiting those awful events again and again in their minds. Father, there are others too, perhaps the people in Squirrel Hill, perhaps the people in, in South Carolina. All these events that have taken place remind them and bring the pain back anew. May the Holy Spirit be with each and every one. May you guide and strengthen them as they go through this time of, of grieving. May you, may you bring them a clear and unambiguous knowledge that you are there, that you are strengthening, and that you are guiding. And Father, for the people who foment these kind of activities, may your judgment be severe and quick. We will not judge for you, but we would ask that your judgment be according to your will. May you bring peace. May you bring understanding. For those people who are going down the wrong path, may they have a course correction. We saw it happen to Saul on the road when you spoke to him and blinded him and then brought him back, we know this is possible. So for all of those folks who seem to find evil as the way forward, may you again speak to them and bring them back. May you, may you heal their evil. Father, we pray all of these things to you. We pray them boldly seeking your presence in our lives. And now, Father, may we be so bold as to offer the prayer that your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Richly, richly have we been given blessings. Richly. May we now return some of those blessings unto God in the form of our daily, our weekly offering, our tithes and our offerings. Glory to God.
Father, we lift up to you this offering and we seek that it would be acceptable in thine sight, that you would use it as you use us to bring glory to your name here in this place and beyond throughout your kingdom. It is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Entering the mission field, do we have anything? I have a whole list of things. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the flowers this morning are given by Dan and Cheryl Flint in memory of their parents, Dean and Betty Donaldson, Willie Flint, and Barbara Isles. So thank you for that. Um, on that same note, we are doing flowers from Peppers. Um, and if there's a sign-up sheet in the back if anybody's interested um, in flowers. And I just have to give a shout out to Peppers. They have been just doing a fantastic job with their arrangements. Um, Bible school, do you want to say something about it? I'll let you go. Yeah, June one. 12th through the 16th, um, 6 to 8 here. Um, it's coming soon, and my little sign out there blew away, so it's now back inside to repair. Um, the butterfly release is June 5th. There are um, order forms on the back table there and in uh, the chapel. June 12th, we will start our summer hours. There is a slight change to that. Instead of 10 o'clock, it will be 10.30. So just remember, June 12th, 10.30. If you're here at 10, you'll just be a little early, so it won't be a 12th bad. 12th or 5th? Huh? 12th or 5th? 12th. Because oh. the, the 5th is the butterfly release. Yeah, okay. Okay. Glad I asked. I'd have been here. <laughs> what then? Um, also, announcements. There's, it seems to be more things going on now that we don't have COVID anymore. So if anybody has an announcement that they want in the bulletin, please just let me know. Email me, text me, call me, just to let me know. Okay? That's all I have. Good morning. So for Mission and Outreach, uh, we had a work day over at Edco Park yesterday. I want to thank everyone for uh, coming over. And uh, it was a hot morning. Man, was it hot. Uh, but we got the uh, soil knocked off of the top of the section that um, needs to have the mulch, and we had the fabric put down. Haven't been over there today. I'm thinking that maybe the wind might have taken some of that fabric away. But, um, uh, but I'm going to reach out to Edco and Ronnie to uh, find out when the borough can bring up the landscape or the uh, mulch uh, and then maybe a handful of us, I'll reach out again and maybe a handful of us can go and spread that out and it'll be done, just a small area, so thank you for that. Um, second thing, keep continued prayers for the pastor nominating committee. Thank you. Yeah, I keep forgetting that in the morning prayer, sorry, didn't think I wasn't encouraging you to find somebody to replace me. <laughs> Anything else? All right. Our hymn, our closing hymn this morning is Immortal, Invisible God, Only Wise. <laughs>
we need a new replacement theory. Maybe the theory is replace hate with love. Maybe the theory is to replace apathy with action. Maybe the replacement theory is to replace non-Christian beliefs with the love of Christ. I would charge you to go out into the world with courage, to hold on to all that is good, return no one evil for evil, support the faint-hearted, help the suffering, honor all people, and to rejoice. Rejoice in the power and in the presence of the Holy Spirit that is within your lives, now and forever. And now may the grace and the peace and the love of the one triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit descend upon us and abide within us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Amen.